Hello everyone, I'm George Taylor from Imagine Nerding, and on this episode, we're taking a look at one of my favorite books, and a very rare title it is indeed, The Art of Walt Disney World Resort by Jeff Curdy and the late Bruce Gordon, forward by Roy E. Disney. This book was requested by a viewer, so I was happy to take a look at it, but I've got to turn it around sideways, and you'll see why in a second. So let's take a look at the table of contents. You've got several different sections, a world of nostalgia, a world of adventure, a world of fantasy, a world of history, a world on the move, a world of tomorrow, and then biographies of the principal artists, which is wonderful. And then of course, it's a Jeff Curdy title, so we've got a bibliography. All right, let's take a look. Starts off about some of the artists, how in some cases they don't know who the artist was. There's one of the uh, schematics for Disneyland, the site schematics. But here's where I got to turn the camera around because they laid it out this way on purpose to display this beautiful artwork. So let me flip this around and I'll be right back. So as I mentioned, I needed to turn the book around because of how Jeff Curdy wanted to display these beautiful images. And I know you usually see the white background, but I just didn't have enough white background to cover this. So Tabletop it is. So it starts off and you've got this great look at the Great Mississippi Steamboat Race by Paul Hudson in 1982. A lot of these artists, we're gonna go through this so you guys can get a good look at it. Main Street Station by Colin Campbell. And then the Main Street Hotel, you did know that the town square where the camera center was and now close to, uh, well, it's where Mickey and Minnie, the town hall is, that was gonna be a hotel at one point. And then you've got some Main Street overview and block elevations. Again, more elevations. Main Street Town Hall, Town Square with City Hall. Again, lots of Paul Hartley and Colin Campbell artwork. And this Main Street Town Square photo, it's a pen and ink drawing. It is gorgeous and I love it. And then you also have some more modern things in here as well. That one's from 68. This one's from 1982 of the Grand Floridian Resort. Uh, pencil and Conte crayon on paper and then another version of the Grand Floridian, the Disney Institute, the Caribbean Beach Resort, and Boardwalk. And Disney's Yacht Club concept up at the top by R. Tom Gillian. I love the way that looks. Beautiful colors. Make sure I'm not missing a page here, which I was. <laughs> and a concept for World Showcase by Harper Goff from 1977. And that's Marker. It's beautiful. France Pavilion in 1979. So you can see just, just beautiful concept artwork for how that looks. Disney's Coronado Springs Resort's Folt Arc Panel. El Rio de Tiempo Finale. And the Thames River Ride. You knew about this, right? Harper Golf, 1986. Fortunately, we never got it. And then Mickey, uh, Are You There, Spirit? Another attraction that we're going to do back in the UK Pavilion. Again, for Dickens' Christmas Carol. <laughs> oh, I love these photos. Hollywood Billboard, the Pacific Electric Billboard. A world of adventure. Here is romance. Here's adventure. Here's romance. Here's mystery. Dorothea Redmond has done some amazing preliminary artwork. And that's what the Adventure Line Gate was supposed to look like. That is amazing. Absolutely gorgeous. Adventure Land Gates detail again by Dorothea Redmond. Main Street Vehicle ad carts in the Junk Cruise ad cards. I love these. I said carts. I meant to say card. <laughs> You would have seen these on the buses, so to speak. Not the buses, but the, the double-decker buses on Main Street. <laughs> Artwork of the Nautilus, the poster for 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and cabin interior of the Nautilus submarine. Wow. <laughs> I hadn't looked at this book in a while. There's the Pirates of the Caribbean Hurricane Lagoon by Mark Davis, the Skeleton Grotto, and the Pirates Bay. You can still see this as you're in the queue for pirates. If they make you go to the right, 
uh, once you enter the area where they do the load and the load and you have to go up and over and you'll see this anyway enough of that more stellar mark davis artwork including the pirate scene where the two uh, pirate skeletons are playing chess and they are in checkmate it's an eternal stalemate more or less leopard in repose from 1980 the water hole in 1983 I think these were parts of the, um, let's see, that says it was, oh, for the El Rio de Tiempo, this would have been for the African Pavilion, oh, Costa Rica Pavilion, Botanical, Botanical, wow, I'm having problems tonight, the Land Pavilion Mural, wow, gorgeous artwork, I haven't seen this in so long, so Nature's Headquarters Elevation, which would have been the Africa Pavilion, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Disney's Animal Kingdom, I'm sorry. And again, Animal Kingdom Park Discovery Island by Joe Rogue. Tree of Life, Kali River Rapids. Again, Ben Tripp and Joe Road. Tiger and Temple Ruins, 1991. Wall panel design for the Lodge, the Animal Kingdom Lodge. A scene for Kali River Rapids. A World of Fantasy. Characters in the Clouds is this background. Oh, I love this. So this is a fun map of Walt Disney World by Paul Hartley. And then here's the other fun map that they did. And this is one that is hanging, excuse me, that was hanging in the Contemporary and the Polynesian Resort Rooms. And a lot of people remember this. Uh, it's a great map. You can find reproductions of it on the Internet as well. Love that. So you've got the murals. Dorothea Redmond had done the mosaics for the Cinderella Castle. Studies for Fantasy, uh, Fantasyland by Dorothea Redmond. Fantasyland View by Herb Ryman. I love both of these artists. They are so completely different, but they convey such emotion and activity and just beauty in their presentation. Ah, oh, it's a small world finale scene by Mary Blair. So she was still working on these. And some more Main Street Vehicle ad cards. Oh, I really love the Haunted Mansion one, although they use that artwork for Disneyland. And look at that Country Bear Jamboree. Fantastic. Oh, the Grand Canyon Concourse Mural. And figure details that would have been in that area of the Contemporary Resort. Grand Canyon Concourse Mural detail. 90 foot tall tile mural. Frontier Town, the Great Western River Expedition. Mary Blair, 1969. More for the Western River Expedition by Mary Blair. Wonderful. <laughs> Mickey Mouse Review, their house curtain, and character design, and Muppet Vision 3D by Nina Ray Vaughn. And I've seen this so many times. That's wonderful. Okay, Disney MGM Studios Aerial View. Oh, I want to take some more, uh, a deeper look at this to see what's changed. And then uh, the Backlot Tour, one of the ideas for it. Oh, that entrance for the Disney MGM Studios Backlot, that's beautiful. So I think... No, I have to think about where this was because they got the backstage where are Star Tours in this. Anyway, Sunset Ranch Market, Andy Sklar, 1992. And no, I do not know if he's related to Marty Sklar at all. These are decor panels from the Imagination Pavilion. Julie Svensson, 1983. Gosh, I remember that ride. Star Tours Q and Entry, Nina Ray Vaughn, 1988. Catastrophe Canyon. I love that they had an Ewok village there at the beginning. So cool. <gasps> Treasure Island, The Wreck of the Hispaniola by Colin Campbell, 1972. Gosh, that would have been amazing to walk through that. Treasure Island, Men Guns Cave, when this was going to be more of a walkthrough for what was Discovery Island back in um, Bay Lake, uh, close to the contemporary, in between the contemporary and Fort Wilderness. Wow. Oh, nice. So, uh, painting by Colin Campbell of Pleasure Island, and then a nighttime aerial by G. Meyer. Gosh, that's amazing to think. <laughs> a 
what we've got today, uh, the Miss Lily, uh, the Lily Bell, excuse me. A world of history, homage to our ancestors, celebration of our diverse origins. So we've got the Centennial Exposition painting for the American Adventure, the Transcontinental Railroad, Will Rogers, Ben Franklin, and Mark Twain by Herb Ryman. Oh, gosh. Spectacular. Liberty Square by Herb Ryman from 1968. Another Herb Ryman, the Concord Bridge in Liberty Square. Oh, this is spectacular. And this building in the background was one that Foxfur from Passport to Dreams was trying to figure out what it was because it's on some early maps and it's in some of the early models. But couldn't know, didn't know what it was. There's the American Adventure and Will Rogers. Again, Herb Ryman doing masterful work for Epcot. Frontierland Aerial, Colin Campbell. Gosh, that's a great image. So this is the old Frontierland train station, which is where Splash Mountain sort of is. I wish I'd seen that in real life. Frontierland Covered Bridge and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad by Tony Baxter. Again, Dorothea Redmond did that, and it's so charming for that covered bridge in Frontierland. Sam McKinn at Pioneer Hall, Fort Wilderness, the Canada Pavilion, Village Stage in Fort Wilderness. Huh. A nighttime study of an outdoor performance space. Okay. I wonder if that's where they were playing the Chippendale barbecue, the Jamboree. All right. Norway Pavilion. Colin Campbell. And Bob Sifo? Yeah, who did the Morocco Pavilion. That's nice. Very, very nice. Italy Pavilion. And then Italy Restaurant Exterior Elevation. So this is Ron Bowman from 1983. So this is probably Alfredo's. And Venetian Facade. And the Venetian Restaurant Interior. Actually, I don't think these were used. No, no, they weren't used. Because there was going to be a water show. Um, sort of where the Doge's Palace is. The German Beer Garden and the Rhine River Cruise by Sam McKinn. I know you've had to have seen this online before. Can't imagine what that attraction would have looked like in the back of the Germany Pavilion. Had to be wonderful. African Folk Art Icons, 1979, so they would have been getting ready for Epcot. Equatorial Africa Pavilion by Herb Ryman, 1980. Gosh, yeah, his artwork is just so inspirational. Dan Goose, Dust Bowl Farm Exterior, Living Land Montage, and the Farmhouse Interior Cutaway. And you can see there's a um, amusement park or a carnival in the background. Would have been neat to see an animatronic family as you went by the Living with the Land. Okay, dinosaur color models. <laughs> so I mean, this was for the Energy Pavilion. No, 1996. Okay, my fault. So this would have been, oh, this was for the universe of energy. Okay. On the move, riding the rails, cresting the waves, and rolling along. Oh, look at these. Gosh, these vehicle ad cards. I would love that Walt Disney World Railroad one. Look at that locomotive number two. Oh, that's great. These are wonderful. And I love that shot. Oh, gosh, a Fort Wilderness and the railroad that used to be there. That sort of encapsulates everything that Fort Wilderness was supposed to be. Love it. Rivers of America show concept with the buoys, the dinghy buoys that are there, the, the river markers. Gosh, that's a Mark Davis, and that was something he added to the story. There still are a few. Next time you're there, check them out. So the Richard F. Irvine, it's called the Steam Packet, the Seminole Launch, and the Osceola. Gosh, I, I love the watercraft at Walt Disney World. It is truly stunning. This is great. I never really paid attention. You've got the castle in the background, Liberty Square. It's nice. <laughs> the Tomorrowland Classic Grand Prix. This one always looks like an Atari 2600 cartridge to me. <laughs> so runabout poster art from 1968, Grand Prix Raceway, which would have been pretty cool back then. Oh, gosh, look at this monorail card. That is beautiful. I know everybody's seen this George McGinnis print for the monorail coming out of the contemporary. Of course, I love this. It's a gouache pen and ink author, artist unknown from 1969. 
And it just sort of defines what the Magic Kingdom was back then with a lighthouse. All right. Oh, wow. Another George McGinnis. It's called Tri-Level Transit. And look, so you've got the People Mover. You've got the Sky Buckets. And you've got the Altopia, the Grand Prix Raceway cars, all in one. What a way to show movement. I'm not even thinking about it. World of Motion, Tim Delaney, 1979. Wow, Maglev Train, they had some really great ideas for Epcot. Oh, look at these. A World of Tomorrow, New Frontiers, and Hope for a Unified World. So you've got the Contemporary Resort. This one was done by Ken Chapman. Another one by Ken Chapman. This was Disney's Polynesian Resort, and it was going to be... You still had the longhouses, but they had a large, central, more modern tower with cascading... I don't remember if they had waterfalls or if it was just plant or vegetation that was here. But this was going to be on the top. You'd have another restaurant, large ceremonial house. Oh, love it. I'm glad they did what they did because the Polynesian is so much more intimate than that is. Oh, wow. So this would have been 1983 when they were looking at, wow. Oh, my gosh. They were going to redo. We were going to lose that mural. Oh, I'm so glad that didn't happen. But those colors would have been nice for the time. But, and then the Indy Speedway, just a Clem Hall mood piece. Redesign it with some futuristic motifs on it. Tomorrowland entry, 1970 from Herb Ryman. Look at that activity. You've got the Jungle Cruise boats coming out all this way, which doesn't really fit, but that's okay. I even love his, the lettering he did. Oh, wow. It still looks a little bit more like Disneyland. But that's okay. And then Tomorrowland Overview by Clem Hall in 1973. Still planning Space Mountain at that time. Uh, Carousel of Progress. You've got the entry, which is what we would have seen with the towers and the cascading uh, water waterfalls. Woodway People Mover. Again, this looks more like Disneyland to me. And here you can see it's enclosed in glass, more like the World's Fair, the 1964 Ford Pavilion, but this was done in 1969 by Colin Campbell, so not too far off. And then more Main Street Vehicle ad cards for Mission to Mars. Wow, so Mission to Mars. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Flight to the Moon, then Mission to Mars. Love it. So Mission to Mars show building. John DeQueer Sr. And then we've got Mission to Mars again, so you would have seen more graphic of uh, the interior where everybody sat and the cameras and the cameras all around. And they went a motorcycle outside. Okay. Spaceship Earth. And this has sort of become iconic and they're reusing this again for Spaceship Earth with the, the redo of the vehicles. Horizons Future World. That is a wonderful Herb Ryman piece. Wow. Love it. The nighttime, the activity, the people. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, and then Space Mountain by Clem Hall in 73. It's a watercolor. It's, it's, that looks beautiful. It's more like an upside down ice cream cone. Anyway. Oh. Ooh, Herb Ryman's 77 Spaceship Earth, the gold version. Stunning. Of course, I never went to uh, Epcot wearing my double-breasted jacket. <laughs> but again, it's a concept. It's an idea. Spaceship Earth again, just a feeling of what Spaceship Earth was going to be like. Assuming that would have been at the top. Oh, World of Motion, two different views from Herb Ryman and Billy Sullivan. Or Bill Sullivan, excuse me, we'll more finish what we saw. And here you can find artwork of a cutaway on top that shows you climbing upstairs and going to these different areas in the pavilion. The Universe of Energy by Bill Sully, 1982. Beautiful colors in that as well. Beautiful colors. <laughs> the Living Seas Pavilion, Sea Base Alpha. Diver and the Dolphin painting, Living Sea. So a lot of these for Epcot were more concept, more ideas, more thoughts of what they could do. As you can see the sea cabs taking you through, which you can still do today, just as Nemo. Astro Orbiter, 1992. Wow, that is screaming late 80s, early 90s to me with those pastel colors. Wow. It's interesting. 
Of course, the Avenue of the Planets, when they redid it, the Tomorrowland Rear Plaza. Huh, that looks a little bit like the new Epcot Entertainment Pavilion that we're getting. Hmm. Oh, what a great Star Jets. I love it. It looks like the vehicles look very Bob Gurr. But then look at this. You've got these throwbacks to the World Pavilion, which they then colored. This is a great angle to show everything happening in Tomorrowland. The Light and Power Company. Large arcade. Show building. Oh, all right. And let me turn the camera around again. So I truly love Jeff Curdy's works. He's very thoughtful for us as the readers or uh, how we devour this book. So they've got biographies, uh, biographies of the principal artists. Tony Baxter, Mary Blair, Colin Campbell, Mark Davis, R. Tom Gillian, Paul Hartley with several paragraph biography. Sam McKim, Dorothea Redman, and Herb Ryman of course had much more because they really did a lot more with the development of Walt Disney World. And they were very heavily involved with Disneyland and Epcot as well. And of course, a shout out to Walt and Roy Disney. And then you do have acknowledgments, a selected bibliography. I love that. A listing of special publications. And then an index. So you can find your favorite thing. And then the last one, Herb Ryman's signature drawing of Cinderella Castle Walt Disney World from 1967. Pencil and charcoal on vellum. And it's 15 and a half by 12 and a half inches. That's absolutely stunning. Wonderful. Okay. So there we've had a really not so quick look at the art of Walt Disney World. As I mentioned, the art of Walt Disney World is one of my favorite books. I mean, I've got so many favorites, I can't choose just like my children. But again, Jeff Curdy did a wonderful job along with Bruce Gordon. This book came out posthumously for Bruce. Uh, I know Jeff Curdy did it partially to remember his friend, but also because he did help him with this and Bruce was a wonderful Imagineer, a real champion of history. And if you haven't uh, done the Nickel Tour yet, Try to find a copy of the Nickel Tour. It's history of Disneyland and postcards. It's wonderful. So this is a book that takes us through the history and the development of Walt Disney World with some truly stunning concept artwork, a lot of which had never been seen before this book's publication. And now we have the opportunity to enjoy it as well. And I hope you can find a copy of it. So what do you think about the art of Walt Disney World Resort? Is this worth the hefty price tag that you find for it on the secondhand market? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear from you. I'm George Taylor from Imagine Nerding, and I hope to see you in the parks.